Hello everyone, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my deep dive for the Libra Lunar Eclipse, March 25th, 2024, this worm moon. And I'm calling the theme of this particular major event, Lunar Liberation, which we'll get into more details about that. This is going to be a very long presentation because I am going to timestamp pieces for each sign. So the house that this eclipse is going to occur in for each sign, I'm going to highlight to you what types of things you may see happen as a result of this eclipse. But this first part is going to be for everybody to give you a little bit of a background to give us a nice foundation on which to go to more layers. First thing to know is that lunar eclipses tend to bring things, right? There's a full moon. So uh, fullness, completion, fruition, drama, elucidation, things being unearthed, things being brought into the light, things coming out of the darkness, hidden things coming out, uh, something coming to fruition, something coming to manifestation, something coming to a dramatic ending, or coming into its full glory. These are the kinds of things we tend to see at every full moon, but whenever we have an eclipse, that energy, that movement, that drama, that expansion is like threefold really and there are those and I am one of them and I have tracked this to say that often things in astrology things in life happen in threes right so we can see this at eclipse time that a lot of times there will be three separate manifestations especially if you're you're connecting in um, to the degree that this eclipse is in, in in some place in your chart which we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on that you know you may notice multiple manifestations of this eclipse uh, and also you might notice glass breaking. So if you have been breaking glasses or glass has been breaking around you uh, and we're in eclipse season, then it could be the tension from this eclipse. So eclipse season is basically the four to six, sometimes eight weeks before the actual eclipse. So the eclipse being on March 25th. The beginning of February would start that season. Then we've got another eclipse on April 8th. We're not going to go into that right now, but so it would be four to six, sometimes eight weeks after that last eclipse would be the end of the eclipse season. So that's carrying us through even to the beginning of June. So our eclipse season is really from February through June with the most active time being in March and April. So in the time leading up, there's tension in the universe. There are paradigms that want to be cracked. There's balance that wants to be found. There's karma that wants to be cleared. And a lot of times we can feel that actually manifest physically in the form of tension, anxiety around us. And a lot of times a glass breaking will break some of that tension. So what I have seen is that sometimes when we're carrying chaos in our fields, we can attract more chaos to us experientially. But the glass breaking breaks that tension and I feel like it can be productive. So instead of getting aggravated about glass breaking, as long as no one's hurt, of course, um, then bless it. Bless it because it could be protecting you from something else shattering or something else um, you know, stressful. So you might notice that, but definitely the tensions are high. Insomnia can be um, high. All of these things that we're talking about here are for all signs. I'll dive into specifics for you know individual signs later, but for now, all of this is general information that can affect every Zodiac member. Background about this eclipse is that this Aries Libra eclipse cycle that this is part of started in early 2023, and it will go to early to mid 2025. So this eclipse that we're having now is the midpoint of this eclipse cycle. So there are storylines at play with the me versus we continuum, as I like to call it. Me is the Aries, we is the Libra, changes in relationships. Uh, we'll go into more of that in a second, but we're basically looking at the story of people coming together versus our individual energetics. And so a lot of storylines will be happening throughout this couple of years. And once we get into each eclipse season, which is around every six months in this period of time, then, you know, we have these hot spots of manifestation. The odds for 
things that are internal regarding this process come out externally. You know, that's what happens with astrological transits is that unconscious factors that have been directing our lives, guiding us, affecting us, the eclipses or the other intense astrological transits will bring those stories from the deep unconscious up, bubbling up to our conscious experience. And so the odds are greater during the eclipse season and the, the stronger we're in it, the more this is true, that you'll have manifestations from this. So just a little bit of additional information for timing if you want to understand this eclipse cycle and some of the things that may happen, think back to 23 or 2013 to 2015. Think back to 2004 to 2006. And think back to 1995 to 1997. Those were periods of time when we had this Aries Libra eclipse cycle. And think back at the types of relationships changes and then, you know, other types of changes you've had. Now, if something terrible happened in those times, it doesn't mean that the same thing or something terrible will happen now because we're not doing a complete redo of what all the planets were doing then. So whatever happened then was a product of all of the astrological factors that were occurring at that time, not just this one thing. But you might tend to see storylines in line with this energy of me versus we and partnerships and relationships that came up then that could be very strong defining moments in your empowerment and your independence and your relationship status that have happened during this time. And you'll likely see that, that type of thing again. Eclipses are on a point in, in the sky. Eclipses are, are more like the ecliptic is an area that is strongly associated with karma, karma and dharma. Okay. So when eclipses occur, Anything having to do with the north and south nodes, which are these placements here. If you're looking at the video version, I think I can link this as the thumbnail so you can see this in the podcast version as well. And yes, there we go. Okay, so the north and south node are, the north node, the thing that looks like headphones, that is our area of highest expression this lifetime. The south node that looks like a horseshoe, that area is our, our karma, what we came in with, what we came here to understand, what we came here to heal, what gifts we came in with that makes things, certain things natural for us. So whenever we have an eclipse during, you know, through a polarity, like we have at Aries Libra now, we're working with karma and dharma in very strong ways and very destined things can occur. Transformational things can occur. We can step through a portal into a brand new life and it can be actually mind boggling. So, you know, this is a heightened time of, of very notable experience. There's intensity to it. Sometimes it's the best of times. Sometimes it's the worst of times. And sometimes all of it is wrapped together. The idea of becoming liberated from something is a very strong theme now. And relationships are going to be part of this storyline. So you may be liberated from a relationship period. Maybe you've been trying to get out of it. Maybe it's not good for you. There could be an ending. Um, you could be liberated from a way of being in relationship. Um, you know, there are many different ways that this can go. You can be liberated from a chapter and then on to another chapter. But there, liberation is the key here. And that is, you know, true for all signs. Now, it turns out that Aries placements, since they have what's called a natural chart, whenever anything happens in an Aries chart, it's double time. So for Aries, when we have, okay, so the eclipse is here in the Aries chart. This is the seventh house. So everyone in the zodiac has the eclipse happening in the seventh sign, Libra, which rules the seventh house, which rules relationships and more, which we'll get into. But Aries also has the eclipse happening in that house. So that means everything that I'm about to share of the, of the possible implications of this eclipse in a general way for everybody is actually doubly true for Aries because it's not only in the sign, it's also in the house. Okay, so I'm going to do a deep dive into seventh house or Libra eclipses. And so everything I'm about to go into is true for all signs because this is the sign that the eclipse is in, okay? For Aries, it's the house also that the eclipse is in, so it's doubly true for you. And then what will follow after that, I'll go stepwise, Taurus, etc., on, and we'll go through the houses to see some other layers that all of the other signs will see as manifestations in this eclipse season.
So hang tight through the um, Libra 7th house presentation because this is true for everybody. And once that's done, it will be time stamped for Taurus through the rest of the signs. If you know your rising sign, you can also watch for the, the time stamp segment for your rising sign because this will be another dimension of your chart that will have truth for you. Some ways I have seen this 7th house or Libra energy manifest from the perspective of eclipses is reflecting on balance in life. So you can consciously use this eclipse to evaluate the balance that you have in your life or lack thereof, work-life balance, financial balance, balance between self-care and external responsibilities. You can identify areas that you may be overextending or neglecting important aspects of your life. And you can make the adjustments to restore the equilibrium. Reviewing contracts and agreements and legal things that may come up, seeking mediation and resolution, cultivating gratitude and appreciation for people in your life or working on your relationships and creating balance and self-care. Okay, so now I've got a list of more things that can manifest for all signs and for Aries, all of what I'm going to say is going to be doubly true for you. Eclipses are major astronomical events and they're also major astrological events. They bring things into the focus in a major way. And although sometimes during eclipse cycles, certain individuals are not as notably or obviously affected, but sometimes these changes are more subtle and we have to look harder to see that there's a paradigm shift at play or something else working in the inner realms that aren't necessarily manifest in a huge way. A lot of how we experience an eclipse will depend on the exact degree of the eclipse um, sign and how that interacts with our placements. So it's very complex, but certain things are very common, which is an increase in focus on the field of experience that the sign or house rules, um, drama for better or worse, you know, dramatic conclusions, brilliant new openings, or movement along chapters, closing of a chapter, opening of a new chapter in certain areas. So when there's an eclipse in the seventh house or Libra, one of the biggest things is relationships. A new relationship comes in, an old relationship ends, or even a new relationship ends, beginnings and endings of relationships, or movement along a continuum of key relationships or the relationship to relationship. What comes up a lot at this time is the topic of codependency. Codependency extends beyond even what the AA um, definition was, you know, and the, the way that codependency was originally um, defined was that there was an alcoholic or a substance abuser, they were the addict, and then the codependent was the person who kind of had to dance around the erratic nature of living with someone who's an addict. But then of course things get more complex because a lot of people who have addictions also have codependency issues where they draw in other people who have problems. And basically the main point that where the way I define codependency is that it's a real, it's, it's a boundary disease or a boundary issue. And so eclipses in the seventh house or Libra tend to bring up boundary topics are you setting too many boundaries and blocking out intimacy that you want? Are you not setting enough boundaries? Are you um, setting boundaries in a way that you're going to get what you want? Or are they from fear? Are they from old programming? You know, the question of boundaries is one of the biggest things that I see coming up. So movement along in gaining what I call interdependence, where, yes, we need other people. We need to interact with other people. It's part of being human to connect with others. Um, but how we do that and the, the fulfillment that we have or don't have, the patterns that we brought with us into our current relationships that we have to or get a chance to own, you know, so being really accountable at this time with owning what made us be attracted to a certain type of person or a certain type of situation and doing the inner work to be able to shift our vibrational magnetism for certain types of situations rather than just blaming um, another person. 
Eclipses in the seventh house or in Libra also often bring in perfect practitioners or helpers. So, or, or bring endings to those relationships. So maybe you've been working with a practitioner for a while and you complete your work with them. Or maybe you've had someone working for you or you've been working with. So, you know, agreements about working together with someone can come to an end. It can come to a fruition, like you reach the goal or the objective. Um, or you can have a new practitioner or a new helper come in. This time is really great for finding people to help you in any area of life, whether it's a counselor or, you know, um, an, a mechanic or an assistant or anything like that can, you know, eclipse in or end or change a relationship to, um, to those things or with any of those people. And so in general agreements, you know, agreements come in, in a big way, coming to an agreement on a topic that needs mediation or is in mediation or where there's a disagreement, there's often notable movement in when there's a seventh house or Libra eclipse having to do with agreements between people. Aesthetics and design is another topic that also comes up. So new design projects, new ways of, um, you know, working your space or working your wardrobe or, you know, artwork or anything like that can come in. So new systems for your aesthetics, redesign design projects, or if your work is in design, that can be highlighted as well. This time is also really great for, um, movement along. If you're trying to build clients, like a cl client relationships, certain clients could be eclipsed, eclipsed out or certain ways of relating to them or, um, you know, how you go about interacting with, with them. So that's also included in the relationship space. So in general, the seventh house in Libra eclipses will feature relationships and your relationship to relationships and any key people in your life and your agreements with them. Anything unresolved in relationships are often going to come up and anything that's been worked on can come to a magical fruition. Something else that it's really important for Aries to know is that this five degree Libra eclipse will oppose your sign, bringing great intensity, a lot of very notable events, especially if you're March born or you have Aries degrees between zero and 10 degrees with five degrees being the most intense. So the closer to five degrees, the more notable intensity you will receive from this. But it is also important to remember while we're thinking about this intensity that fire and air energy go together really well. So there is a compatibility here that can be very beneficial for Aries people. So for Taurus placements, all of the things we just spoke about, except for those specific um, degrees for Aries, but all of the relationship effects are things that Taurus people can experience from this. And additionally, you have another section of your chart that is lit up like the 4th of July at this eclipse time, and that is called the sixth house. So I'm going to go deep into what a sixth house, which is the house of Virgo uh, type of manifestation can be for Taurus. And one other important note is that this angle that is made between this eclipse and a Taurus placement is called a quincunx angle. And it can be a little bit awkward, but it is the type of energy that can spur a major crack out of a matrix into a new way of being. Eclipse time tends to bring drama, fruition, major changes, major trajectory shifts, things that are surprises, things that um, are, you know, moving along a continuum that you've been working on. So a major fruition. So basically it's a very active time of change and emotion. When there's an eclipse in the sixth house or in Virgo, health is a very big focus. For some people, this will actually result in a health crisis. If there's something that's been undercover that has not been in the light or that you have not been aware of, sometimes that can be brought, brought to light. For others, it could be movement along a continuum of the health practices or of diagnosis or of solutions or something where there's something notable. Finding of a perfect practitioner, you know, um, doing labs or diagnostics, um, and getting into a, health, a healing or wellness routine. 
So anything having to do with um, finding a new practitioner, whether it's in the mainstream path or the alternative path, finding a new modality that's a major has a major impact, finding a new um, you know practitioner, and this can also have to do with one one's own wellness path turning into a heal like a practitioner path. So you stepping into wellness as a practitioner, um, because this house and the sign also rules work, your vocation, you know, part, it's a part, partly related to the vocation. And if you are in that, in any of those lines of work, medical alternative or mainstream, then work can hi- be highlighted as a major sector, major closings in your work of how you do your work, major openings in how you're shifting into the next level of your work. Um, if you've already started this process, new gym memberships, you know, new diets, things that rule your daily experience in yoga practice. Yoga is in here, meditation, acupuncture, all of that. Medic um, surgeries, um, proceed any kind of procedure that's medical, getting into the details of a bigger picture. So this time often will give you a download or a necessity from the outside or an impetus from the inside to start to work on the details and get a system together for your life. Like even where you put your keys when you come in, you know, how you do your um, maintenance on your vehicles and home, you know, just everything, the systems on which everything in your life runs, those can be called into question and brand new routines can come. I see this happen or, or manifest a lot in like, either moving or a temporary lodging or going so somewhere else or changing a job or, you know, something major happening to your life where what your daily routine is changes in a big way. I also see pets being highlighted at this time. Sometimes a new pet comes in. Sometimes a current pet needs more attention or you have more time and focus or you start, you know, a new training regimen with them or um, something related to pets your pets could have some symptoms and definitely at this time it would be important to follow up with those things because things under cover tend to come out at this time. And sometimes there's a transition um, for a pet, um, whether it's going into a different home or whether it's, you know, transitioning out of body. So things involving pets and other animals, sometimes people who work with animals will see, you know, um, this manifestation show up along those fronts, you know, people in the veterinary field, people doing healing work, equine therapy. Um, and again, there could be this, uh, this thing having to do with you wanting to do your wellness for work and moving along that process. One of the most important things at this time is to not ignore your symptoms or your pet's symptoms, you know, symptoms in eclipse season are showing us the things that are brewing under cover and paying attention to them and being proactive could make for um, an easier process and even better outcomes. Decluttering and organizing in a big way, like doing some sort of um, major process. One of my favorite uh, resources for this is The Magical Art of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. She also has another book called Spark Joy. Things like that, where there's like a system for organizing your life. And she talks about organizing your things in these certain ways. She has a method where you will never have clutter again if you stick to this. And also helping you to release things, like the process by which you release things, judging on whether they spark joy for you or not. Um, So bringing clarity and coherence to your surroundings is a big piece of this. And, you know, there are many ways that that can happen. There could be someone or something in your environment that is bringing less coherence. Um, and they could be, you know, that could be eclipsed out or something could be shifted, or you could have a major inner shift that could drastically change how you structure your external environment. Supplement regimens and other daily practices, including spiritual practices, can also come in in a big way during a sixth house or Virgo eclipse cycle. So someone could find a meditation practice and really get into it or go deeper into it or anything like that, where it could come in 
in a big way if it's brand new, or it can end and shift into something else. Anything that has to do with our daily experience. So for Gemini's, we have all of the things about relationships that were discussed earlier. And then we have another layer, which is a fifth house eclipse energy. So I'm going to go deep into what eclipses in the fifth house. This is also called the Leo house. What types of things that uh, we can see manifest from this. But one quick housekeeping point on that matter is that this is a fellow air sign eclipse. So this is the most favorable angle that could possibly be made for a Zodiac member is a 120 degree angle like Gemini is going to experience with this eclipse. So for Gemini's, this is the most fabulous angle that we can have. And this is going to be true for all Gemini placements, but those of you who are in the Mayborn can experience extra goodies from this. The closer you are to five degrees, so basically between zero and 10 degree placements, but the closer to five degrees, the more of a kiss you make. And that's basically targeting all Mayborn. And the closer you are to around May 27th, the more you get that kiss. Eclipses tend to bring drama, fruition, major closings, major openings, major trajectory shifts, surprises, or accomplishments along the lines of things that were already in process. At eclipse time, things tend to be eclipsed in and other things tend to be eclipsed out. When there's an eclipse in the fifth house or Leo, there's often a major focus on children. This can be, you know, work with children, whether they're your own or others. It can be anything along the process of pre-pregnancy, conception, pregnancy, birth, child rearing, relationships with children. The creativity process is also ruled. And so the idea of a creative project with, you know, for many people, creative projects are their babies, even those who have other children. So this energy um, of creativity, having a conception of an idea, following it through, birthing it, taking care of it. So I often see a new project come in or a previous project get moved along in a big way, including, you know, being birthed out into the world. I see things having to do with hobbies, like a return back to something that you love, or sometimes a hobby coming into the forefront is a possibility to make money with it. Anything having to do with bringing fun or childlike wonder into life. You know, sometimes something could happen to someone that you know that makes you start thinking, wow, I better have fun now, right? Because life is fragile and maybe the fun ratio is not enough. And for others, you know, maybe an addiction to pleasure or too much of fun and irresponsibility could come up as a factor where you start to, you know, start to streamline, um, changing how you have fun, changing what fun is to you, things like that. So an old way of doing fun can be eclipsed out and a new way of doing fun can come in. Talents and even hidden talents. So anything where like you would stand on a stage and people would look at you for the good stuff that you do, singing, dancing, fashion, you know, any place, anything where you're on display, musician, music, um, athleticism, being, you know, leading a group, something like that, acting, modeling, things like that. Things where you have something that's special and people look at you because of that or listen to you because of that. So those can be brought up. So you might find a hidden talent in an eclipse cycle, something that you didn't know that you were good at. So it definitely is important during this time to take those nudges. If there's something you always wanted to do or something that keeps coming up, to just try it because it may result in you finding something you really, really love or that you're really, really good at. Anything having to do with leadership, being seen, your role in as a director or a creative director, the energy of your personal creative flow um, coming in in a bigger way where you figuring out what that is. Many people have been so um, focused on what other people need and what they're supposed to do, that they've strayed away from what they actually love. So this can be a time where you start to take ownership of your own creative um, juices and getting those out into the world. And really just this energy of being seen in multiple ways. So maybe clearing some vows um, 
where you vowed to not be seen for various reasons. So children may need more attention. If there are some things or patterns that are continuing to come up, this may be the time when they actually have to be dealt with. This can also be a time of stepping into a new awesome chapter with kids. Um, and any of these other things that we spoke about are very likely to come into the forefront. So a really great way to use the energy of this time is to make a commitment to your creativity and make a commitment to the things that really light you up. You know, the, this Leo energy is ruled by the sun. So anything that just makes you feel on fire is something that comes into the forefront, either to do more of or to come into more balance with. So for cancers, this eclipse is going to do all the relationships that we talked about, but also it's going to be in what's called the fourth house. So that is actually the house of cancer. So this Libra eclipse is happening in the fourth house that is ruled by cancer. And we'll go deep into what manifestations you can see. But the first thing of important note is that this eclipse actually makes a square with your placement. So this is a pressure point and you will be feeling that. But pressure points don't always have to be bad. They can be the catalyst that cracks you out of an old way of being into a new, more desirable way of being. And all cancers may feel that pressure, but you June-born friends or anyone with zero to 10 degree placements, the closer to five degrees, the more of an intense angle, you will feel that pressure to crack open out of your shell and start your new life. But that possibility is available for you all. Okay, so eclipses tend to bring changes in trajectory, new opportunities coming to fruition of things in process, surprises, drama, bright openings, notable things in the forefront of home and family and some other headers. So we're going to look at some common ways that I have seen the fourth house um, or cancer eclipses manifest. Home and housing. So many, 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 many people will move during an eclipse cycle where there's a fourth house or a cancer eclipse, moving to a new place. Some people, this will include like a bi-location or a multiple location. Like if you have a house already, you can set up a second residence or a different residence in addition to the one you already have. For some people, it manifests as just a complete clean different move. Sometimes it's a temporary move or a temporary change in housing. Um, this energy very much can rule sales, you know, or sales or purchases of homes, getting a home ready for sale, um, purchasing a new home. Even though eclipse time very often brings these into the forefront, definitely always pay attention to the other information I give for the horoscopes at that time to understand how other transits that can be occurring at the same time as the eclipse season can interfere or um, enable uh, contractual arrangements and big steps. Very often, a fourth house eclipse will have to do with the changing of occupancy within your home. So let's say you're there and you stay there and the house is the same, but someone moves out or someone moves in. Or you start using your home for home-based business. Uh, the starting of a home-based business is very common. Um, at bringing on you know, an Airbnb um, or any other home-based business where you're working online making repairs or making additions or changes to the home. And again, with these kind of things, definitely pay attention to the other aspects of the time because, you know, minor repairs can be fine at any time. But if you're going to do major additions, there are other astrological factors that I always speak to in the horoscopes that can be relevant. But I do see these eclipses tend to bring movement along um, these fronts with things like this. Changes in or notable things going on in family, and that's your family that you live with or your family that you came from. Drama, um, solutions, healings, you know, people getting married, so there's new entrances to the family, people having separations, children, new children coming into the family. I see a focus on ancestry and genealogy come up very often in this. You might find out you have a relative that you know, is notable. Um, you might connect with someone in your genealogy. You may become really interested in tracking your ancestry or genealogy, or someone may contact you. 
Um, childhood psychology is another thing I see come up. There are rhythms at, at play in our lives. And if you, and, and things tend to be cyclical. So the things that you're experiencing now, a lot of the ways that you feel right now, you felt as a child, and that had to do with childhood imprinting and many other factors. But the relationship between what you're experiencing now and what happened as a child and possibly even prior to, if you believe in past lives or if you believe in genetic memory manifesting as our experience. So, you know, attention to what's happening now as it relates to the past and doing inner work to help stop the cycles for yourself and your family. So that I see that often come up with the fourth house eclipses or cancer eclipses. So in general, with the fourth house or cancer eclipse, be prepared to focus on your inner world um, or the things closest to you, like home level, family level, history, and your emotional or inner space. So Leo friends will experience this eclipse in the third house, which is called the house of Gemini. And we'll go into what types of manifestations we can see from that. But first, let's talk about the angle that's being made. It's a very favorable angle called a sextile. It's a 60 degree angle that is the angle of opportunities. So this is a beautiful kiss from this eclipse for Leo placements. All Leo placements can feel this kiss. But those of you who are July born, you are more likely to get a kiss from this. Zero to 10 degrees, the closer to five degrees, the more you may notice the beautiful effects from this placement. So again, anyone can get the beautiful vibes, but if you have any Leo placements close to five degrees, or if your birthday is um, July born Leo, then you're likely to see more notable effects from this. Eclipses bring major changes, major news, and major events. And although sometimes we observe other people having the changes and we're holding space for them, very often we are the ones that are having the changes when the eclipses occur in these certain placements. When there's an eclipse in the third house or Gemini, one of the sectors of life that is very much brought into the forefront is communication. So this can be interpersonal communication, the way that you relate to others, your communication style. Um, I very often will talk on this topic about how our nervous system has been imprinted with the tones, with the, the things said and not said by our parents or primary, um, you know, child rearers that get laced into our way of talking. And so going deeper into how, well, actually, you know, in many cases, violence is just imprinted in to our language, whether it's passive aggressive or, you know, if a parent is stressed and it goes into the speech and the kid gets imprinted with it, then it rolls into our communication style. So in depth opportunities to look at how we're communicating. And again, you know, I mean, this comes up at this time, but it, it has to do a lot of times with how we experience someone else. So if someone else, if we think they're being harsh or they're not being fair or they're being, you know, um, in a certain way, sometimes those can, things can serve as reflectors for us at this time about our own personal communication patterns. And the more we can own that if we're having communication issues with other people, that we can own our part of it and where it came from and how we're attracting it in, the more we can uh, use the opportunity that comes at this time with the eclipse cycle. So interpersonal communications, I always like to recommend the book, um, nonviolent communication by Marshall Rosenberg, where he um, outlines this plus a plan to, um, to shift it. I really love this, his work because he, he gets people together that are basically warring with each other, sometimes very seriously warring with each other, gets them in the same room, teaches them this communication, um, system, in, you know, to, in order to help people get better outcomes to reach common goals with their communication. So that's a big one that I see. Devices are another part of this. So, you know, issues with devices, dropping phones in toilets, um, you know, having new devices, having to have them or choosing to upgrade or any kind of change with communication, anything having to do with systems, you know, your system of communication with people. So how, you know, email, um, you know, ways that you go texting, ways that you go about communicating. So notable things occurring there or changing how you relate to those particular um, ways. Something else that comes up a lot 
with third house eclipses and Gemini eclipses is transportation and mobility. So the modes of transportation, issues with a car or other vehicle, um, getting new ones. And again, you know, I always talk about this. This eclipses often bring in new devices or transportation uh, pieces, but definitely also pay attention to the, the, the time that it's occurring. So, you know, if it's a personal planet retrograde, which I speak to more in the, in the horoscopes, um, you know, it may not be the time to voluntarily make a purchase, but if you can just, you know, watch the general transits as they relate to the eclipse season and time your purchases if possible, um, that can be helpful. But in general, this topic will come up. It's a time to not ignore when your car is doing something weird. You know, that's the bottom line. It's a time to make a pledge to not text and drive and remember that before we could text and drive, we didn't. So therefore we still can <laughs> manage to get from place to place without texting or, or even talking on the phone, anything that can interfere with the driving because this energy can increase the energy of accidents. Um, and so even if you're walking or, or biking, you know, avoiding, um, being distracted while those things are happening, you know, look, to, you know, ha, uh, be extra careful with your physical body as it relates to other people moving and you moving around. This energy also has to do with um, physical mobility. So if there's been an injury, you know, sometimes there's an injury from the eclipse or, or related to the eclipse, or sometimes there's a healing moving along a, um, a continuum of regaining mobility, a different chapter of mobility. Writing and editing and some different aspects of, of um, your expression can come up at this time. So writing projects um, and opportunities. Also, relatives that aren't parents or kids are related to the third house in Gemini. So cousins, siblings, aunts, uncles, things like that are in this house. So notable connections with these people or opportunities or progress along a continuum can often come in as a uh, third house eclipse chapter. Gemini can also relate to social settings. Um, and some aspect of, you know, relating in a social scene. So notable interactions in the social scene um, can also come up at this time. So a quick summary of some of the ways to best use this energy is to respond to the things that occur. Um, you know, so if there's a symptom, if something's going on, you know, look into it. Pay attention to the opportunities that come and take them seriously. And follow your hunches in these areas. Make a promise to yourself for accountability. So, you know, ask yourself what, how you are the common denominator in your interactions and do whatever is relevant to the situation to own your part and to work with your part of the dynamic. Pay extra special attention as you're moving around and have much, much extra care and extra focus. And be prepared to blow the dust off of old writing projects or start new writing projects or get down into the um, cleaning up of, of, you know, communications or other writing projects that have um, already been in process. So Virgo friends will experience this Libra eclipse in the second house of money and finances and a bunch of other stuff. So this is a very notable um, placement that people tend to get very excited about. So let's go into all the details of how I have seen this manifest. Eclipses often bring radical changes, major news, major trajectory shifts, sudden accomplishments, sudden things getting eclipsed out, other things getting um, eclipsed in, things coming to fruition. And when there's an eclipse in the second house or Taurus... These are the areas that I see most highlighted with these uh, storylines. One of the big ones is finances. So there are many different facets of finance. Someone could have a big breakthrough in how they're doing their budgeting. So, you know, and sometimes this is forced from the outside. And sometimes it's instigated from the inside. So a sudden realization that something has to be changed. 
I've also seen Eclipse and Second House or Taurus bring about major purchases. Now, it's always important to take this information about eclipses and also factor in what else is happening at the time. Because if an eclipse is in a personal planet retrograde, you know, recommendations for whether to make um, major purchases, you know, may be shifted depending on certain time frames. But in general, in an eclipse season, I often see major purchases made, you know, a home, a boat, a luxury item, or a sustainability item, you know, solar, adding solar, something that's a major purchase that will enrich the, your life in some way often comes through. I've seen, you know, major jewelry purchases, you know, something that has some significance to the person um, from a material perspective often comes through with these eclipses. I've seen new sources of income. This is one of the major things that I see in these um, eclipse and second house or Taurus cycles is a new way of making money, a new source of income, a raise, um, you know, something different or additional about money. Also, sometimes a, a source of money can be eclipsed out, you know, so depending on the energy, but changes in how you make money, changes in sources of income. Sustainability topics. So this has to do again with the finances, like questions about sustainability, things coming to a head. Maybe they've been unsustainable and they spiral out of control in the eclipse time. Maybe you make a, have a make great breakthrough and you pay off debt and get current in the eclipse time. Something having to do with living sustainably um, from the financial perspective. An increase in savings, like a bunch of money come in or a bunch of money go out. Something having to do again with um, you know any, anything in the financial sector. I've seen things in having to do with the environment and the earth. So earth projects, you know, getting your hands dirty, building projects, um, again, sustainability as it relates to the environment, your imprint, questions about your imprint, or, you know, something having to do with changing the environment around you, building or creating. The energy of security comes up quite a bit. So emotional security, financial security. So a lot of times there are major occurrences on the topic of security. So again, that can be like a, a zap to the security where something shifts and you're feeling less secure or something happens that solidifies that feeling of security. And all of this can also have to do with, um, you know, even steps that one takes to be more financially certain in the future. So putting things together that will affect this sector at some point. And also inner work having to do with self-esteem based on making more money. So, you know, again, raises or, or, or the, the awareness of one's own um, value that can shift how they, what they call in as far as their income. This energy of sustainability can have to do with the financial sector, but is also, you know, very holistic. So the quest to be emotionally sustainable, you know, financially sustainable, um, where someone can do things on their own. So not just sustainable as it relates to the world, but also sustainable as it relates to um, the individual's uh, ability to stand on their own feet you know, so being able to, um, rely on inner resources sometimes even, um, rather than having to have someone else or, or outside resources. So like a, a remembering of inner resources and a development of your own inner resources. I often see these eclipse cycle, the eclipse cycles that have to do with second house and Taurus have to do with starting a business. And again, if this, you could see the relationship here between sustainability, but I have seen it in a manifestation where somebody starts a business, somebody ends a business, somebody opens a new chapter within a business, somebody closes a chapter within a business, you know, so the closing or opening of chapters or the closing and opening of whole projects can follow the eclipse cycles or eclipse placements in this house. And that does, again, lead back to this energy of sustainability, because when one has their own business, there's a different level of sustainability than, um, you know, kind of just making everything happen themselves and developing the way by which their finances will improve, kind of taking financial um, 
the financial picture by the, by the reins and feeling back, um, more in control or more in a directive role in the financial sector. And often that does have to do with, um, having one's own business. Sometimes I've seen this where people start businesses on the side of their regular businesses. And sometimes I've seen this eclipse manifestation be where this is the time when their business takes flight or they kind of jump all in. So Libra friends, you are in the hot seat at this eclipse season. You are the ones that will likely experience the most profound radical change from this eclipse and this eclipse cycle along with your opposite partner, Aries. So you will definitely be feeling that. All of the relationship possibilities that we talked about earlier are definitely true for you as potentials. And then you also have this occurring in your first house. So we're going to go deep into the potentials of what an eclipse in the first house can manifest as. And as far as timing, all Libras can be feeling this major intense change and transformation. But those of you who are September born between zero and 10 degrees, the closer to five degrees. So that's going to be the closer to like September 27th for your birthdays. The more intensity you will likely feel with this part of the eclipse cycle. But this eclipse energy is ongoing, you know, from early 2023 to uh, mid 2025. This is going to be transformation afoot for you all. And the eclipse times will be hot spots for that transformation. So let's talk about the first house eclipse potentials. Okay, so eclipses bring major news, major trajectory shifts, things coming to light that were hidden, things coming to fruition that had been in process. They can bring surprises or they can bring accomplishments in the direction of things that were planned. When there are eclipses in the first house or in Aries, these are the areas that we tend to see focus and the ways that they can tend to manifest. Okay, so the first house in Aries rules the physical body. So we can see drastic changes in weight, major weight loss, major weight gain. That can include muscle gain, you know, body, physical, structural changes. This can also include things having to do with wellness. So massive physical or physiological healing, an alignment, a breakthrough, something where you've been working on it or it comes as a symptom with a problem and then it comes to a resolution. There are sometimes health crises that um, can come from an eclipse. So if something's been undercover, whether you've known about it or not, if it's sort of been rolling around, it could come out in a big way. Or if it's something you've been working with, it can um, have a next major step. So sometimes a major illness comes at this time. Changes in your image, so your self-esteem, breakthroughs with your self-esteem, healing things that happened in the past that made you feel um, certain ways about yourself. So anything having to do with your image, your self-image, um, and this can also have to do with, of course, you know, it's hard to separate psychological pieces that have to do with physical or physiological outcomes. Sometimes a major change to the physical body, like a pregnancy or something, any kind of change to the physical body is common during an eclipse in the first house or Aries. Also recognition is another topic that I see uh, come up a lot with an eclipse in first house or Aries. So again, like you get thrown out into the limelight, something where all eyes are on you. And this could be for better or worse. You know, this could be scandalous or something comes out that was um, maybe not intended to or a misunderstanding or something, um, you know, where, where your name or your image gets put out in a bigger way. And this can be for better or worse. Um, but I do definitely see a lot of things that people have been working on come to light in this um, time where all eyes are on you because you have moved forward with something because you've owned your awesomeness because you are uh, ready to be seen or cleared out vows to not be seen so working on being seen and being recognized physical appearance comes up a lot at eclipse time where radical changes to the appearance can come up and sometimes an eclipse is a perfect time to um, make a radical change to wardrobe or to physical appearance. I always say, you know, listen carefully to the um, 
horoscope of the time, because if an eclipse occurs during a personal planet retrograde, sometimes it's better to hold off on some of those changes if they're big permanent ones. But I usually speak to this in, um, you know, in the more detailed general horoscope, but in general, major changes to appearance and also changes to identification. So how you identify, whether that's from a gender perspective, whether that's from a professional perspective, I see a lot of people owning what they came to do. So like, for instance, um, you know, in the past, people knew me as a person who had a real estate business. And at another time, people knew me as a person who was a pharmaceutical rep in a corporate job, you know, so I identified with how people would, you know, see me. And that often is based on our vocation. Then as I started to own that I'm an astrologer and a spiritual teacher and, um, all of these things that I do now, you know, I identified with a different aspect of my potential that started to come out more as my main presentation. So I see at eclipse time, many people will start to, um, look at how they're being perceived and see if that's in resonance with their heart, with what, what they really see themselves as and making changes along the path to come into more, um, integrity with how they really see themselves and how they're putting themselves out to be seen, um, which a lot of times is related to vocation, but again, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Some general tips for this time are to um, stay well rested, pay attention to your physical body, like symptoms, anything like that. Make vision boards about how you'd like to present yourself, and you know, including wardrobe or hair or um, you know what you see yourself as essences of what you want to embody more of a plan to get to that, um, you know, vision, having support for any of the problems that could be happening, you know, so sometimes seeking help outside of yourself can be, um, a major part of being able to step into this different first house Aries eclipse chapter. Scorpio friends, you're going to see this Libra eclipse occur in your 12th house of the deep unconscious mind. So already eclipses bring things out from the unconscious space, but you have special focus in that deep, dark place, this wellspring of creativity and all that is. So it's definitely going to be an intense manifestation, but lots of positive things can come from it. Let's take a look at what eclipses tend to bring and what eclipses in the 12th house can bring. Eclipse time is a time for drama, a time for accomplishment, a time for excitement and things coming to fruition in a big way, surprise changes or movement along a path as expected. When there are eclipses in the 12th house or Pisces, they tend to bring even more emotion. All eclipses bring emotion because the moon is involved and the moon rules our inner realm. So eclipse time tends to be pretty emotional. Most of the time, there's some way, if you look hard enough, where you can see the eclipse energies working in your life. Some of the manifestations are more subtle and they're working on the inner layers. So they might be a little bit harder to track and see in a tangible way. And that would, could be especially true for um, a Pisces or 12th house manifestation. Also, depending on the mathematical connection between the actual degree of the eclipse and your personal placements could be could make the difference in whether or not this is an eclipse or an eclipse cycle that really is bringing the biggest changes for you. Or if you're just holding space or watching other people to go through things. Sometimes if you're not having the eclipse hit you in a very notable way, then you're holding space for other people as they go through changes. But it is definitely important to understand the nature of the eclipse in the certain placements because a lot of times there are subtle workings maneuvering around in the backdrop away from our general consciousness or, or awareness that if you were, if you knew it was going on, you could work with it more closely and definitely in general, high emotion for all eclipses, especially for water energies, especially the 12th house in Pisces. And the emotion can be bad for, for, for better or worse. So something that tends to be highlighted more at eclipse time in the 12th house or Pisces is dream time. Issues with sleep, resolutions for sleep issues, um, notable dreams, dream activity, um, starting to step into different ways of working with your dreams, 
either just naturally it happening or you purposely using it this way, like lucid dreaming or um, dream journaling to help you recall and make sense um, and most use the energy of your dreams. And the dream energy is very much related to the subconscious mind. So harnessing and, and having a greater level of mastery over your subconscious mind is one of the goals of this eclipse cycle. And sometimes that comes through um, mental instability, showing you where you really have places in there to master. Some of it comes through spiritual breakthrough. Fears and addictions tend to come into the forefront in a big way. I always call this 12th house or the energy of Pisces, the Harry Potter energy. So where he's got these, these fears, um, and they manifest that see, they seem like really you know big ways outside of him, but really it's his own inner journey. It's his own inner, um, battle. And so the battles that we have internally tend to be highlighted in this 12th house. It's very much like an attic where there are resources, inner riches that are there to be cultivated and to be mined. And there are also fears and dirt and, you know, things to be wiped and cleared and organized, um, and set straight in order to make the most of that space. So this eclipse time might be a time where you have to face a fear, but that's also the time where you can get through the fear. And if there's an addiction involved, that may come into the forefront. Healing of your mind through psychology, hypnosis, neurofeedback, or other, you know, help from other practitioners is a very major theme that tends to come up at this time. So if you tend to have some instability in that place, you don't have to bring, bring, you know, fear into the situation of worrying what's going to happen. You can be proactive, get your team together, you know, know that you're, you may have more activity in that realm and take a more active role through diet. Diet can very much affect the psyche. Sugar levels can affect the psyche. Um, and imbalances, chemical imbalances can also. So educating yourself on these topics could be a, a manifestation of the eclipse or having breakthroughs. The taking of a retreat or sacred space, going on a retreat, is an amazing way this energy can manifest. Claiming of your sacred space. All people are sentient beings, which means that we are feeling, we're feeling our way through life. When our fields interact with other people's fields, sometimes it's hard to differentiate what we've got going on from what other people have going on. So really owning your sacred space, making a breakthrough, making a commitment during this time and having the impetus to do that, um, is one of the major manifestations. So taking space within your home, you know, where you claim it and you own that space energetically, clearing out your energy field, making, um, you know, standing on the, on the earth with bare feet is one way that I do it. You know, Epsom salts or sea salt baths. You can use essential oils. Um, you can use meditation. You can use prayer, whatever it is that helps you to clear out that auric field around you. We all have an auric field around us. This isn't metaphysical anymore. Science is catching up with being able to sense these subtle fields. So imagining that auric field around you and imagining it accumulating with other people's energy in your own and imagining it be cleared out and putting systems together to clear it out are all part of this eclipse cycle because that affects your psychological and emotional state. So the more you can, you can step into rhythms like this and practices that help you to, um, you know, use your subconscious space, including asking yourself, your subconscious, a question before you go to bed uh, and asking for answers in your dreams or when you wake up, you know, so just working with that cosmic soup and the Akashic records and just the place where there's all one and getting insights from that place. So any inner work. The Presence Process by Michael Brown is one of my all-time favorite inner work um, resources. Also, EFT, the Emotional Freedom Technique, is a very um, free, I mean, there are tons of free resources on it that you can use to master your subconscious mind more and to harness your unruly um, negative patterning and face your fears and addictions. Another way that this 12th house and Pisces energy can manifest is with artistic and creative expression. So just a time to be quiet, to have a, you know, a new creative project, to have an old creative project come to fruition, 
to have changes with your creativity cycle, to have anything having to do with the space that you do your creative work or creating a space for your creative work, whether that's space like making the time or an actual space in your home. Those are all ways that I have seen and um, these energies manifest and the, you know how you can best use the energy at this time. On the topic of addictions, major breakthroughs or occurrences can happen along these fronts. And this is an amazing time to be able to actually face an addiction and to get help for it and to get freedom from it and to really um, crack the matrix of the patterning. But a lot of times that might need, first of all, some outside support, but also inner accountability and doing the work in order to, um, to clear it. I have seen many people have major spiritual insights, major connection from the spiritual realms, ethereal support, ethereal connection with people who've crossed over, um, major insights that can be life changing occur in this um, cycle. Fellow Sagittarius friends, this Libra eclipse, besides all the relationship stuff we talked about before, this is also going to affect your 11th house. And we'll go into all the different layers of how this can manifest. But I also want to talk about the angle that it's making for Sages and Sag placements. This is one of the most favorable in all of astrology. It's a 60 degree angle. I call it the angle of opportunities or the ingredients on a counter angle, where basically you're given all these things you need and you just have to put some effort and put it into action and make something yummy out of those ingredients left for you by this eclipse. All of the Sages can experience great goodies from this, but anyone that has five degree placements of any kind, zero to 10 degrees will say, but the closer to five degree Sagittarius placement you have, the more you're likely to see a kiss from this. So this is basically our November born and the closer to around November 27th, the more you get the kiss. Eclipses usually tend to bring something very emotional that's occurring. And the emotion is centered around the house and the sign that the eclipse is occurring. Some people will have close mathematical tie-ins to their personal chart with certain eclipses that will make them more of um, kind of in the experience of the, of the changes. Other people will have others around them going through changes and hold the space for those people. And some people have both going on. You know, you'll notice there are times where you're like, what the heck is going on here? Everyone's going through so much. And a lot of times those coincide with these eclipse cycles. When there's an eclipse in the 11th house or the house or the sign of Aquarius, there are certain sectors of life that are brought into focus. Eclipses tend to bring dramatic endings, things coming to completion or fruition, like through goal and accomplishment, or sometimes through just an abrupt surprise ending that's completely out of your control. Sometimes they also bring in new opportunities, brilliant, awesome things that just come to you or that come from things that you cultivated in the past. So the 11th house in Aquarius sectors that will tend to be highlighted with these eclipses in this area, these areas, are friendships. Sometimes a sudden incoming of a new friend of, or a person of consequence, whether it's an acquaintance or a key contact, or the ending of a friendship through someone moving or, you know, transitioning, um, or through an argument or a falling out. Falling outs with a friendship can occur. Changes in your relationship with certain friendships can also happen where maybe there's been an unhealthy dynamic and you could be moving along a continuum to having more functionality in this key relationship, but also in your relationships in general. Changes to your place in the group. So finding your footing, like finding your tribe, finding, you know, people who you resonate with and your place within that group or feeling alienated in certain groups and having to regain your footing and figure out where it is you feel like you really belong. Friendship circles can change. Um, dating opportunities can come, especially through online 
or friends trying to set you up with somebody. And definitely with things like this, pay attention to what the other factors I talk about as far as personal planet retrogrades, you know, um, for, you know, that, that flavor, the period of time that the eclipse is happening. Um, but in general, dating and acquaintances and friendship circles and groups, you know, like let's say you're part of a philosophy group, or let's say you're on a team of some sort within your work or for a hobby or for a, an interest or something like that. Changes in those sectors are very common at this time. Finding a new group is also very common or losing resonance with a current group. People, when they're having eclipse cycles in the 11th house, will often be reevaluating their friendships and reevaluating their social circles and also reevaluating social media and the relationship to social media. So the new, you know, the starting of social media accounts, the progressing of social media work, or the stepping away from and reevaluation of social media. Anything internet based is also here. So, you know, launching websites, internet work, getting your work out into the world in a bigger way, creating online communities or anything community based in person. So having community efforts, grassroots things, um, are all coming into the forefront with, with a greater frequency work with large organizations, either as part of one or like collaborating with and humanitarian efforts. So nonprofits or working with something that's already established can tend to come up in a bigger way. The 11th house and the energy of Aquarius is also the, um, the sector of your big dreams, not the ones you have at night, but the, the dreams that you have for your life. So evaluation and reevaluation of what it is that you would love. If you didn't have any limitations, if you didn't have any obstacles, what is it that you would just really love to do? So the figuring out of that and movement along actually doing something on the topic of your big dreams is something that can also come in in a big way. So opportunities, resources, shifts in that arena or those arenas would be um, more likely at this time. Inventions and anything else with technology or future-based efforts are also uh, related to this house and sign, as are unconventional relationships, unconventional ways of doing things. Um, so like cutting edge new information being on the, on the leading edge of, um, expansion. So projects that could be related to things like that can come to fruition or can come in in a big way or move along in a progression. Okay. So Capricorn friends, you're going to experience this Libra eclipse in your 10th house of career and work and employment and all kinds of other things, which I will get into. And this is going to be a 90 degree angle for Capricorn. So this is a point of pressure. Don't be scared by this though, because this is exactly the kind of energy you need to get unstuck in your work or your career or your life focus or whatever the other things we'll get into. It's a very great cracker out of a matrix type of angle. So you might feel the pressure, but pressure doesn't have to be a bad thing. You could have a deadline that helps you accomplish a great goal, or you could be uh, accomplishing something great, but it requires some extra work that you have to use to pull it through. So you'll feel the pressure, but it can open you up into amazing things. Let's talk about what eclipses tend to bring and what you can expect from this one. Eclipses tend to bring in new opportunities and or dramatic endings and closures or things coming to fruition. The things that tend to be highlighted at a 10th house eclipse time or Capricorn eclipse time are the work sector. So job, boss, coworkers, as it relates to your work experience, um, your career. So ending a job is very, very common at eclipse time, either through getting fired, you know, having a package, a compensation package, um, or voluntary leaving of the job. Sometimes new opportunities for work come in that you can do on the side of your other work. So a new job opportunity that allows you to keep your current one. So it just kind of adds to, and sometimes it's a lateral movement. Sometimes there's a, um, 
a move for work. So there's a work opportunity, but it requires a move. And sometimes there's a necessity to move, which can necessitate the change for work because of the move. So it can work either way. A lot of times when there's eclipse, an eclipse in the 10th house or an eclipse cycle is working in the 10th house or in Capricorn, father or father figures come into the forefront in a bigger way. Sometimes dad has something going on. You know, there could be illness, there could be pressure, there could be something they're experiencing. Sometimes it could just be that the father or father figure is helping you or that your relationship to father, either through forgiveness or through other, you know, collaboration could be coming into the forefront. So projects with dad, relationship with dad, um, is often going to come into the forefront. Authority figures, you know, which again, usually has a basis in what your relationship was like with your father as a child or your father figure or lack of father figure, but clashes with authority including like legal or police matters sometimes come for people or bosses um, or you being your own authority, finding your inner authority or, you know, kind of like being an authority to somebody else, management um, positions or stepping into those type of roles. For those who don't work or have a career or need to make money, the energy of the place out in the world can often come up at eclipse time with a 10th house or Capricorn eclipse where there's a finding of a Dharma, Dharmic path, like this is what I'm supposed to do, which may or may not be related to money. Um, but stepping out into the world, taking one's role in the world, doing what someone came here to do, sometimes there's movement along those fronts, either through accomplishment, like you accomplish a goal of what you set out to do, or through greater discovery about what it is exactly that you're supposed to do. One of the resources that I really love for this is a book called Astrology for the Soul by Jan Spiller. She's my favorite astrologer, and this book has had the most influence on me. Um, so that her book can help you through a certain placement in your chart to better understand the pitfalls that keep you away from doing what you're supposed to do and what your highest expression is and how to get there. So I highly recommend that for everybody, especially when this um, cycle is occurring. The energy of discipline and responsibility. So some people have too much discipline and too much responsibility, in which cases these eclipses could cut out something that you were responsible for. It could be, you know, maybe a, a child is graduating from college or, you know, something is happening where there's an ending to what you were responsible for. Maybe you had a goal and you were disciplined to get there and you reached the goal and now you can lighten up a bit. And for others, it will bring up the, the question of possibly needing more discipline. So something could occur from the outside or an impetus can occur from the inside to get a strategy together to be more responsible, to be more accountable, to take more ownership and, you know, get back more feeling like you're in the driver's seat of your life through your work and discipline and your strategy or bigger plan. So strategies can end, shift, you know, be new, come into fruition, lots of movement in all of these areas at this time. Aquarius friends, great news about this Libra eclipse. It is in fellow air sign for you, which is the most favorable angle in all of astrology. So this is great news. Hopefully this can bring really magical um, expressions for you. We'll talk about what an eclipse in the ninth house of Sagittarius looks like and what you can see manifest from that, because that's exactly where this eclipse is going to hit for you. But I want to talk a little bit more about this angle because this is the type of thing that can deliver amazing things right into your lap without you having to do anything about it, but you can also take important actions aligned with this eclipse and this angle, this beautiful angle, to make things even better and grander from this effect. Now, Aquarius friends, early degrees, so January born friends, um, zero to 10 degree placements, but the closer to five degrees, the more of a kiss you get from this. So we'll say birthdays closest to January 27th in the January born. Eclipse time tends to be an emotional time since the eclipses are talking about eclipses involving the moon. And the moon rules the inner world, the realm of emotion. So emotions, for better and worse, are a general theme for eclipse time. We tend to have dramatic occurrences and um, sometimes just breathtaking, awesome, brilliant new opportunities. So basically things being eclipsed out, 
things being eclipsed in, and it's um, just a pretty wild time of major trajectory changes, things coming to fruition, things ending, and things beginning. When there are eclipses in the ninth house or Sagittarius, teaching is a major topic. So you as a teacher, people in the teaching field will see a lot of changes in how they're doing their work. The topic of learning and teaching are pretty much related and they're all, they're both Sagittarius things. So getting educated, learning, um, your learning journey, um, educational resources, programs, schooling of any kind can come to an end or come to a fruition. You could be graduating with the eclipse energy, or you could be starting a new chapter, or you could be moving along a continuum of learning or teaching. Some people who are not yet teachers, but who are born to be, will step out into the teaching realm when it's eclipse time. So anything having to do with um, writing and publishing and speaking, you know, and again, this is related to teaching. People who are writing, a lot of people who write um, and are publishing have something important to say. They have a message. Speakers, you know, um, bringing information out to people, expanding people's horizons. So new projects, publishing projects, publishing launches, um, movement along, you know, those fronts are very, very, very common. Could be the completion of a book, could be the launch of a book, could be a new speaking opportunity, things like that. Chances to go into the international realms, whether it's via the internet through international business and expanding your work out into an international venue, or actually physically traveling, or interacting with people through your work that are in different countries. I always call this energy of Sagittarius the, the sage on the mountain, where if there's a little village that has their water source disappear and they go up to see the sage on the mountain and the sage says, well, I can see that three miles up there's a beaver dam. You just clear the dam and you'll have your water back. You know, it's this idea of solutions. It's this idea of solving problems with a different mindset than was created. Einstein said, you can't solve problems with the same mindset that they were created. You have to break out and look at it from a different point of view. And when there's a Sag or ninth house eclipse, sometimes that new viewpoint or that um, new solution or new optimism will come in. Your actual belief systems and ways of looking at the world can change drastically with an eclipse in the ninth house or Sagittarius. So a way that you saw something could change you know, a separation from a certain religion or spiritual path can occur. Um, for some people, a dark night of the soul where they're in that, that, that process of not really being sure of their footing in that space. And sometimes a new philosophy or a, a re-energizing of a previous philosophy, getting on, their, on your spiritual path in a bigger way, either from, you know, going back to an old method or, or, um, or a new way of seeing things. It's very common. So things having to do with belief systems can come to a head or can come into the forefront. And so can work with a church um, or general spiritual work come in as a big um, focus. Some people might just see changes within their church or their spiritual ways. So like, you know, a new pastor or a new, you know, spiritual leader um, or new resources along those fronts. This energy of Sagittarius also has to do with adventure. So the, the Sag or Ninth House Eclipse can bring you on an adventure. A lot of times this does involve traveling, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it could be a new tool or, you know, even a book series or a project that is a major, major adventure, doing something that stretches you out of the norm and out of, often out of your comfort zone. I've seen many people uh, have a change with the eclipse in the ninth house or Sagittarius with the taking in or the putting out of information. Okay, so this is along the lines of this teaching and learning, but something like taking the knowledge that you have and doing something with it. A book is one of those ways, talking, you know, publishing, things like that. Sometimes it could be a blog or some other resource where you take the, the, this big accumulation of your knowledge and you actually start doing something with it. And, and for others, 
who have been focusing on those realms, they can start to focus on more mundane or more practical uses of teaching. So this can go anything from like, here I have all this information, here is how you use this information in a practical way, or going and stretching out into, you know, more and more information. So it like it rules information small, like micro information and macro information. So moving along those fronts, sharing information in those ways. And um, for many people who are uh, learners, you keep taking in information, but you get bottlenecked because you have no outlet. So this eclipse for many people will open you up to an outlet to start draining out of your field all of that information that you've taken in and putting it into something usable or even something um, lofty and more philosophical. But in any case, a a conduit to to get it out so that you can um, have your creative flow back because you get all of this information out of your space and into, you know, where it can be used. Different cultures and immersing in different cultures and different languages, so learning different languages, can also be part um, of this uh, ninth house in Sagittarius specific. Or having someone from a different country come to stay with you or having a relationship with someone from a different country where different cultures and languages come in to your experience in a pronounced way. So for Pisces friends, this Libra eclipse is going to take place in your eighth house of Scorpio. So we'll talk about lots of ways you may see this eclipse manifest, but first let's talk about the angle. It's five signs away, which creates what's called a quincunx angle. And this is an awkward angle, kind of like two ships passing in the night. There's an awkwardness here. There's a feeling of, you know, disconnection. There's, you know, an energetic of things like not quite connecting. Um, but that doesn't mean it can't be useful. It doesn't mean it can't manifest in wonderful ways. It doesn't mean that it can't, um, you know, wind up being very beneficial for you, but there is a bit of an awkwardness to this angle that you will feel. So it's good to know that heading into it so that when you feel it, you know what's going on. Now let's talk about some ways eclipses tend to manifest and what types of things you'll likely see from this eclipse in your eighth house. Eclipse season which I call the four to six weeks before or after eclipses, tend to bring in themes that had been in process and tend to bring movement along in certain areas of life. When there are are eclipses in the eighth house or Scorpio, the focus comes to everything in these divisions. So dramatic endings, brilliant new beginnings, trajectory shifts, breakthroughs, um, sudden news that changes everything are very common at this time. So the eighth house in Scorpio relates to other people's money. This is a general topic. And under that header, there are many different things. We've got familial money. So like from your parents or other family members, we have spousal money. So, you know, you and your partner, their, their work, their income, their lives, their family. And so something can happen with a spouse that affects you. Um, and also your shared money. It's other people's money and it's also shared money. So, you know, collaborations where you're working, sharing your resources with other people's resources. Capital, if you need money for something. So getting loans, um, new loans, current or or, um, prospective loans. So trying to get a loan for something. Um, This can also have to do with credit cards, debt, taxes. So we often see things notable, you know, maybe taxes are paid off or a tax bill comes or something notable as far as it relates to a tax profile. This also has to do with intimacy, like deep emotional closeness and also anything having to do in the sexual realm. So very notable occurrences can happen major endings of intimate relationships, major breakthroughs in intimacy, um, new partners coming in, new experiences. The topic of power is one that's very common at um, eclipse time with eighth house and Scorpio representation. 
how other people are using power, how you are using your power, you know, um, people not using their power in the right way, um, people who have power and influence that you connect with that can help you or you using your power or influence to affect or help other people. Psychology and parapsychology are also topics that are in the eighth house. So basically understanding how some, you know, how the human mind works and what makes people tick, the interest in studying that, the lines of work that rule that, um, also anything having to do with investments like financial investments or cryptocurrency, new opportunities, things closing drama, you know, um, moving along a continuum, new chapters in anything with finances or investments or how you go about investment, investing or philosophies or the psychology of money and the psychology, um, of just in general. So studying those things, parapsychology. So once you get deep into psychology, you know, there's, there's a pretty easy line into parapsychology. And then in that realm, it's directly connect. Everything is spirit. So spiritual breakthroughs, spiritual studies, you know, I see a lot of, um, palmistry, I Ching, astrology, numerology, metaphysics in this area. So breakthroughs along those fronts or new resources or new teachers, are you doing your work in those realms? And this can actually just be mainstream psychology as well, but it can be anything esoteric. Anything that's like the most mundane as far as it relates to psychology or anything that's the most expanded, you know, and kind of, um, out of the main sector. The topic of mysteries is common. So solving a mystery, having a new mystery come in, having mysterious circumstances, um, or even for some people that's just writing a mystery book or getting really into reading a mystery book. So just the topic of the things that are lesser seen is really what the themes are that, you know, that have to do with this eclipse in the eighth house or Scorpio. Some of the ways I've seen it manifest are, you know, marriages where your money's combined, divorces where your money's separated, um, people passing away or discussing wills or naming you in an inheritance, whether they're here or not. The topic of what happens to your money or someone else's money when you or they transition you know, anything having to do with, um, the pairing up or the merging of resources on any level, you know, so I've seen people win the lotto with things like in, in here, you know, I've seen people win sweepstakes. I've seen, um, major luck in money happen. And I've seen major surprise expenses or, um, other notable things involving money happen. All eclipses tend to bring a strong amount of emotion because eclipses are related to the moon and the moon rules our inner realm, our emotional space. But when there's an eclipse in a water sign and specifically Scorpio, which is really, you know, a very deep abyss of energy, there does tend to be quite a bit of emotion and this can be for better or worse, but it is, you know, very emotional when the um, eclipse happens in Scorpio or the eighth house. So having a way to deal with these intense emotions um, is one of the best th ways to be prepared for this eclipse cycle because you can be more clear and make better decisions and make better you know, use of the opportunities that come, navigate through any challenges that come when you can take the emotional charge off of things. I have a lot of things that I love for emotional energy, but... Um, EFT, the emotional freedom technique, you can look this up online, has a lot of good science behind it. It's not, it's not just, um, an energy tool and you can manage your emotions and clear through emotional patterning with that resource. And there's tons of free stuff online. And it's important to focus on the emotional realm, even if you're not, even if it's not coming from the outside, because this eighth house with the, being the house of psychology also has to do with the emotional patterning that creates the fabric of your reality. So making major changes in the patterns of your life is another way that the eighth house can show up. And this can also include the topic of codependency, which I also list under seventh house and Libra 
eclipses because these seventh and eighth houses are the partnership houses. So the, you know, how you relate to other people, your relationship to relationship, not just the key relationships are something that tends to come up when there's an eclipse in the eighth house or Scorpio. And the, the question of your, your energy and other people's energy, your money and other people's money and finding a balance and finding, um, you know, your footing in, in resources and connections with others is going to be, um, a major hot topic at this time. I'm going to post the uh, my March playlist at the end of the YouTube video here. Those of you on podcast, you can just scroll down in the list and find my March horoscopes so that you can see more about what is happening this month. So go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address right there on the screen that you get to. Join my free VIP community and jumpstart your healing and wellness with Shine, my complete 28-day virtual coaching program. You'll also receive my monthly written astrology review plus astrology education. You can take a step further and up level to access my secret star portal. I do post a lot of reports early there, so you'll see them earlier there than you will publicly. And if you want to learn astrology with me, you can up level to my astrology certification course. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.